The young grow old, and the old turn to dung. The world is constantly changing. You've got older generations passing on the mantle to younger generations to carry the flame of humanity deep and deep and deeper on into existence. A hundred years hence, nothing matters. These shifts of time change the dynamics of life and humanity as we know it. People are having fewer kids. They're working more. Some people have no idea what they're doing at all. The world may be doomed. People are unable to take care of their children. Everyone has to work nine to five and until they're 78 years old or some shit. There is a lot of brain rot going on right now in the world. <laughs> the future does in fact seem and bleak and i feel like there's a certain level of je ne sais quoi doom that i can feel on the on the on the horizon i don't even know what je ne sais quoi means thank you to aura for sponsoring this video just the other day i did something that a lot of you do i googled myself i didn't like what i found a lot of people don't like me it seems like and also it's kind of creepy how much of my personal information is just floating around out there it's unsettling to think that data brokers can just sell my personal details like my home address even my health records to anyone who's interested that is exactly why i want to talk to you about aura today's video sponsor aura has been been a game changer for me. It's an amazing service that shows which data brokers have my information and automatically opts out on my behalf. When I first used Aura, I was shocked to see the number of data brokers that had my info, but it was all cleaned up thanks to Aura. And since then, I've noticed a massive drop in spam, especially spam calls. And additionally, it's added a layer of protection against hackers who would use my information maliciously. Click the link in the description to get Aura to clean up your digital footprint. But that isn't all. It's also a comprehensive tool that offers antivirus, VPN, password management, parental controls, and even identity theft insurance all in one place. If you think about it, Aura is quite like securing every entrance into your digital house. Be safe. Youth Aura. Go to Aura.com forward slash Oompa or click the link in the description down below. I value my privacy. I know you guys too. They've been a sponsor of the channel for quite a while now. I'm excited to share this with you. Let's do it. Click the link down below. Thank you to Aura for sponsoring this video. Being a parent in the modern day is probably really hard as opposed to being a parent in the olden days. Yeah, there was no internet. You just like played with matches or like threw rocks in people's <laughs> pools. I remember one time climbing up a tree with a friend of mine and just these big kids came by and started throwing rocks at us until we cried and then they left. <laughs> And then we went down, we climbed down, and we started like lighting the woods on fire. Just kidding. It seems like it's probably a lot, <laughs> a lot harder. It's easy now. These Be iPad natural. kids getting out of control. <laughs> but new parents still don't really seem like they have any idea what is going on. They only have one alternative left. Damn. It's time to dial Nanny 911. Hello? This is Nanny 911. I remember going into my great grandparents' house, who I never got to meet one of them, my great grandmother, who was a very well studied woman who had her own her own shorthand, her own language that she would write and take notes in. She had a book on how to raise a child with developmental retardation. They had books to help them raise their kids. Now people use TikTok. Fucking damn it. Oh, That's not a joke, by the way. I did, I'm not lying about any of that. That's all legit. Why would I joke about something like that? You sick fucks. The new parents that have been blowing up on social media for being bad parents, that's what people are saying, they don't seem like they're taking a lot of advice from books or really any sort of learning other than things that they're shown, like things from a TikTok algorithm or a Facebook algorithm or what else? Television? Grandma lets me bring the iPad because if I don't have it, Mm, let's just say I'll probably just start crying, literally. Sure. This old gal here's been in the news recently with the food that she's been feeding her children. Plate my one-year-old's breakfast with me. It goes about how you'd expect. She proceeds to plate a plastic cat water dish with hostess donuts and there's pringles in the background and it's it goes exactly how you'd expect and she's full of life and i can't tell if this is ir ironic or not powdered donuts by the way i love powdered donuts i recommend mewing she then makes the donuts slightly smaller so they're easier for the child to eat because the child's mouth is small and you don't want to choke on a small hostess donut as your first meal of the day then she unboxes a little plastic pouch of what I think is applesauce. I'm not exactly sure. Applesauce, not the worst thing in the world. It's probably better than donuts. <laughs> it actually is absolutely better than donuts. All right, dude. Then just 
fucking suck. Unless you're on a road trip, there is no excuse to eat those. There's no excuse to have those in your house. They shouldn't be ever found outside of a vehicle or a convenience store. They suck. But the powdered ones are the best ones for sure. It's truly titillating con content. It's got me by my, my intellectual brains, guys. It's really driving me down the path that I, I truly want to go here. It's actually very scary. It's a, it's a baby. It's a one-year-old child that she's feeding donuts and applesauce. This parent has gotten a lot of attention lately from this video. She's making meals. She's calling them meals, plate, dinner for my child, and then it's not breakfast. It's a, it's donuts. It's sugar and wheat and like preservatives. And I don't even know what else. I mean, those are expensive as well. Eggs are probably cheaper. Maybe not though. Eggs are pretty expensive now. I wouldn't know. I don't buy eggs. Get a chicken. Just feed it shit. I don't know. It ain't that hard. They're pretty easy to keep alive. You gotta like actively work to kill them. Read that or let them outside and let them get eaten by a coyote or something. Her parental skills are under fire here for the food that she's making for her three kids. She has three children as well. Not just one small infant child. In the other videos that she's posted, you can see her making more food for her children. I use quotations for the word making because she's not really making food. She's actually opening up packaging, removing it, putting it on fine china, cutting it up in smaller pieces, and then twisting. That's not making anything. That's literally just consuming with like a slight additional step. I overcooked the waffles a little bit, y'all. Don't mind it. The donut one, not as bad. All right, donuts, are that breakfast, that's a breakfast food for police officers, and it's kind of, it makes sense. <laughs> Close. <laughs> How about dinner? Let's see what dinner's like for the four, seven, and one year old. Cool. Here comes the fine china. She seems fun. She seems like she's having a good time. She seems like a caring mother, which is really what matters at the end of the day. Then she proceeds to <laughs> make a Wendy's cheeseburger and give it to the child. Dude, what? Let's just get them cheeseburgers and little brown nuggets. Huh? Hey, mommy, I need to say, say something. Hi, hi, Now, I kind of feel bad making fun of this and saying that this is a bad thing, but it objectively is. This is not healthy food, and you might say, well, that's all they can afford. Oh, shit. Fucking Wendy's is expensive. It is the least bang for the buck fast food place that you can go to. And if you take a closer, closer look at the average item price, those numbers also higher. Uh, Wendy's coming in at the most expensive. Taco Bell still can dine on a dime there. They make their patties square so they can charge more. Wendy's single has more beef than the Whopper or Big Mac. At Wendy's, you get more beef and less bun. Hey, where's the beef? You could easily make all of this stuff or something of greater nutritional value for far cheaper. For example, dried beans. Beans are another superfood. Beans are associated with long life. We study elderly people all over the world. We find that the more beans they eat, the longer they live. Rice. <laughs> One of those giant sausage tubes of ground beef. You fucking sausage roll looking twat. I don't know. All of those things have more nutritional value than fucking Wendy's. So that's an invalid excuse in my humble opinion. Oh my God, the kids are so adorable though. Hopefully this is just like for the meme. They're just doing, they eat only these meals for the meme. They only eat Wendy's and then drink orange slurp juice when their mommy wants to put them online or something. I'm not really sure how that works. It's just not healthy at all, especially to feed this to children. You know, there's nothing wrong with eating bad foods on an occasional basis. Moderation is the like, that's the true power of being a, a free person, being able to do whatever you want just in moderation. For example, drinking lean. Bitch, young Joe's world and I'm feeling really good. Like Aiden Ross, you know, meth, etc. Moderation is the king. You can eat Wendy's, you can eat candy, you can drink a Dr. Pepper. I'm very healthy and I drink at least one Dr. Pepper a day. Not at least, probably one Dr. Pepper a day. And I drink a gallon of water and take a bunch of supplements and eat very healthy otherwise. Aside from when I don't, because I like to live my life and I think bad food tastes good sometimes. Although, if I had children, I would want them to be happy and prosper and not have the red 40 stare. Poor food diet is not good for you, but we're concerned about red because that's the most consumed diet. So according to scientists, red can be related to why everyone takes Adderall because we can't pay attention for five minutes because all these adverse effects of food coloring. So I probably 
probably wouldn't feed them windy and donut and apple juice from plastic pouch. I'd let them eat an apple and figure that shit out. I'm hedging my bets on there being an actual meal off camera. This cannot be real. This just has to be hate bait. That's what I'm going to believe because the family does seem like a very nice family. The kids are adorable and they're funny and, you know, they're interacting with the kids. They're not just like, you know, fucking just zipped off that red 40 or zooted off that fructose they seem like they're active and, and they look healthy i really don't know i'm not gonna put them in this video but i'll blow their faces just the risk of kidney stones alone for your poor children is so high and just all sorts of horrible things happening to them if you feed them this horrible shit i do like the fine china entrance though oh my god this has got to be hate bait oh fruit fruit finally she she whipped out the fruit dude she whipped out the fruit She's cutting it up. That's nice. The thing that I like about this is the fact that she isn't adverse to actually putting an effort. She's cutting up strawberries. My parents never made me a sandwich, let alone cut up my strawberries for me. When I would go to friends' houses and they would have like little meals and stuff, that shit was like I had a butler. I was like, oh, that's what my, your mom's supposed to do? Your mom's supposed to be like your f***ing slave? She's supposed to just be at your beck and call and just get you food and shit? My mom would whoop my ass and then go to work for 12 hours a day. My dad would do the same, but when he got home, he'd make deer meat and risotto and red beans. And that's what I ate a lot. That's some good shit. Yeah. And then whenever they weren't home, I would eat dirt and shit that was in the freezer. Anyway, she added fruit. That's awesome. That's great. Strawberries are healthy. They're probably one of the least healthy berries, to be honest. Better than everything else. Then comes the next mix of food. An absolute diabolical combination of Cheetos, chicken nuggets, and banana slices. Don't knock it until you try it, liberal. This is a baby's food guys. This is a baby's food. This is to give the baby what it needs to grow its brain and mature and become an actual functioning member of society. I think that that is nutritionally perfect. Just get some L-carnitine injections and we'll have this baby hitting reps in no time, dude. Oh my god. This is not baby food. This is not baby food at all, dude. This is not baby food at all. It just looks disgusting, man. Cheetos and and oh, chicken nuggets. The, the chicken, the, the nuggets look all right. They look okay. The Cheetos, I thought for a split second were carrots. I was wrong. Those are Cheetos. Now, what does a parent like this possibly create for a late night snack? The little children. Oh, let's see, guys. Off to a much better start than the other ones. I've got to say, that's a, a cooking, a cooking implement. No. <laughs> kiss the cook. I got to kiss. <laughs> They've got contagious laughs too, what can I say? Show the food. <laughs> Just show the food. Onions. Dude, both. that shit looks fucking delicious. That looks good. Okay, wow, Hold on, man. Baby. Going with the carnivore diet. Okay, this is objectively the healthiest thing that these children have eaten, that we've seen. Objectively. Meat, vegetables, cheese, tater tots, a lot of oil, very unhealthy probably tastes incredible. I've got to say, this looks good. This is something that I do sign off on. There's a glimmer of hope. Now, the mother should not be eating this, though. This is very bad for anyone who is predisposed to atherosclero athero atherosclerosis. Atherosclerosis. Although the children can absolutely enjoy this in anyone who, you know, goes outside and runs and stuff like that, but I wouldn't recommend this for anyone who's over the age of, like, 30 or so, so I wouldn't recommend the parents to eat this, the mother and the mother. This would be bad for the arteries. Very bad. Bad for the blood cholesterol levels. So, as you can imagine, this person has gotten a lot of hate for these torturous meals that she's feeding to her children. By choice, by the way. And of course, as evil as that is, and as undeserving as she might be of true hate, beyond just simple criticism, it seems she has changed her mind a bit on some of her kids' meals. Check it out, guys. Yet again, fine china. A fresh fruit plate. It's great to see. It's good. Criticism, comments, as long as they're not too evil, seems like actually get the best of people, and then they perform better. It, it, it works. Criticism works. Open and honest feedback for the win, guys. Maybe the future generations aren't screwed, as the title of my video would suggest. Now, we have another video that's been circulating recently in the same vein as the first few videos, and it's parents just eating food in Walmart on the floor. I think that's technically stealing. I think you have to purchase the food before you can eat it. I don't know that for 100% sure. I definitely ate food while I was in a store. My parents didn't know that I did that. Quite frankly, that's I feel bad about it now. This whole family's enjoying ice cream in Walmart. Walmart, my favorite ice cream store. They say they hungry in the store. Gotta feed them. Hell you yeah, gotta dude. stop and you gotta feed them. That's true, dude. Because one thing about me. On the floor? When I'm hungry, 
You gonna make me eat? Gotta eat. You can tell there's levels of satire to this one. This isn't just like true, pure ignorance, bliss type thing. Feeding my baby donuts. This is a family and the father who I'm assuming took an opportunity to make a funny TikTok that actually did incredibly well. And now we'll see this happen a lot, probably. It's still, man, the level of entitlement you've got to have to just crack open some, some ice cream in Walmart. <laughs> it's just, what about everybody else, dude? What about everybody else, you know? You know, the whole family's eating on the fucking floor, having a fucking picnic in Walmart. There's not a lot wrong with it. This, but there is absolutely some things wrong with it. My kids are hungry. They must eat. They cannot wait. They rule my life. Those are adorable kids. Cute family. I know the video is bait, but I would rather see them feeding them like the first mom. I injured myself trying to cut fries, so someone else had to do it. Just get some food on the way home. You don't have to eat in the middle of a public store in front of a bunch of people who are trying to go about their days. You don't have to eat chips on the floor and have someone who works in that store who probably hates their job clean up your mess. The craziest thing is people who walk by probably weren't even fucking surprised with how just brain rotted people are nowadays doing stupid shit in stores for views. You've got people licking ice cream and putting it back in and committing felonious assault without even knowing it. A young woman woman is seen on video licking a container of ice cream and putting it back in the store freezer. Ice cream in question is Bluebell. In a statement, the company said this type of incident will not be tolerated, adding that they're working with law enforcement to find the culprit. Tampering with food like this could lead to a felony charge. This is like one step down from that. I do like how he's kind of giving us a life lesson in the video. He's like, hey man, just grab some food. If you're hungry, just eat it. You don't even have to buy it. You can just eat it in the store. Just stop. Take a break and get them a snack. It's the only way to get them to shut up. That's it. It's simple. Y'all see, they quiet as people. They quiet. It's okay to take a break, y'all. Yeah. I mean, yeah. It's okay. Or maybe you can't. I don't know. I don't know what Walmart's store policy. They probably wouldn't mind if you just like had a drink or whatever and drank some water and, you know, respected the business. But having an entire picnic and fucking eating ice cream and shit. We can get we need some milk first. I think there's a fair bit of judgment to pass on here, right? You know, I'd never do this. Absolutely. If my children started eating something in Walmart, I would leave them there to be animals. To rejoin the wild, if that's how they want to act. I'd leave them there. And then I'd, uh inject them with L-carnitine and get them swole. But it is one of the most androgenic natural supplements around. According to TikTok, now I will say, these people, you know, they're just kind of doing their own thing. The first moms, just chilling, f feeding their kids food at home, not hurting anybody. Okay, one thing that I will cast so much judgment upon in the most malicious way possible is iPad baby parents, dude. iPads are not for children. Do not let your child use a fucking iPad. You are to be judged epically if you have an iPad baby. It's so bad and it makes no sense to me. It is going to actually ruin those children's brains, like legitimately. It ruins adults' brains who, who have fucking fully formed medulla oblongatus. <laughs> What if your prefrontal cortex has yet to even exist? What is it gonna do to you then? What is it gonna do to your neurotransmitters and your fucking excitatory receptors when you're just like, every single moment of your waking life, you think you're gonna be able to pay attention in school? No, you're not. You're gonna have the red 40 stare and you're gonna get prescribed 5,000 medications just so you can fucking sit still for 30 minutes. Back when I was a kid, my parents weren't around and I did what I wanted. And I went outside and I ate deer meat. And the topic of this video is going to be, we're going to talk about our first dipping experience. There are genuinely kids now being raised with skibbity toilet, guys. Skibbity toilet. The next generation is so fucked. Gen Z is elite. Turkey Slurpee. Every time I say the word elite, it's ruined because of Bentelect. Elite. Gen Z is epic in comparison to Generation iPad. Scoops, deep potatoes, scoops, deep potatoes. Bang! What? <laughs> Brian, I can't buy those individually! Or whatever these little fucking mongrels are gonna be called. <laughs> wow. This guy is so addicted to skibbity toilet, he's resorted to channeling the devil directly into his pores at a cellular level. He's being assimilated by negative evil forces from beyond. Ah! I don't think I can scream that hard. Ah! Skibbity toilet! 
If you saw that shit in real life, you wouldn't you wouldn't like it. It's funny on YouTube. You see a man's head come out of a toilet. You think you're gonna be worshiping it? No, you freak, you little freak bastard. I wonder if parents are giving kids iPads now and have been for like the last decade because they don't know how to raise them or because it's just a convenience thing. What? What's gonna happen? What's gonna happen? Convenience is it costs, you know, a million dollars, but also you save a million dollars through convenience. I, is it really worth it? I don't know. Are they just using the iPads to teach the babies what to do because they don't know what to do? The parents weren't raised properly by the generation before me? Or whose fault is it? I feel like it's their fault, in all honesty. I feel like the 90s, like the 90s people, like my parents' generation, they whooped the shit out of me and, and raised me great. I'm immensely grateful for the lessons that they taught me. Never giving up. Rome wasn't built in a day. Only the strong shall survive. Kill or be killed. The glass is half empty unless it looks half full or whatever else nonsense they said i think it's their fault i think it's not my parents fault but that generation what do you guys think comment down below i know this is going to be a great comment section i'm going to love reading it <laughs> i read them all I, not all the comments but all the comment sections i read them all the following parent just talks about all the things that they're letting their kid do and we can you know watch for ourselves and kind of take a guess as to how this kid's gonna turn out controversial ways we're raising our son he has his own ipad he eats what he likes he's never forced to eat something he doesn't like and if there is nothing he likes we go buy him something that he will eat he is allowed to try and have candy juice and soda etc we co-sleep and contact nap if he wants something from the store we will get it he doesn't have a strict bedtime routine he will not be made to do something he does not want to do his feelings and boundaries are just as valid as ours when he says no it means no i will say he's very adorable and he looks really healthy we're gonna blur his face out because i don't like putting babies on my channel but i'm also gonna say that shit's pretty fucking whack that doesn't really make a lot of logical sense or it is backed by much scientific burden there it doesn't really you know that's kind of dumb i will say that most children probably need a lot more love and and attention and compassion than most were given especially in my generation of children specifically i think it helps with emotional strength and maturity when you're a child and you feel like you're being listened to and heard and you feel compassion from the people around you i think that that's probably lacking for a lot of people but just basically grooming them to be the dalai lama by letting them do whatever they want and treating them like some kind of royalty probably not a good idea dude you're gonna grow a damn little little crazy bastard you can grow a little fucking all right my teacher yes little hitler my desk is small i need this polish boy's desk also Adolf's mom made the same TikTok back in 1898 or 1889 or whatever he was born. I don't know. I don't really care. Honestly, he's dead and I'm glad. Just kind of calling this controversial ways we're raising our child and then posting it out there. It's a bad faith sort of thing from the very beginning. It's like you're not even really inviting anyone in. You're just kind of sheltering yourself off from any type of criticism or learning or evolution from the rest of the people who are watching and you're surprised by hate comments. It makes no sense. Read books. You know, use other people's information instead of thinking you're some kind of God Messiah thing. You're just a person. You mean literally nothing at all. Like actually, I feel like more people would be a little happier if they realized how little they meant alone, especially together, ape strong alone ape weak when you shelter yourself off and you you know try to fucking alienate yourself from everyone because you're so much better than them you become meaningless these few simple steps will allow you to raise a child whose life is completely devoid of all meaning aside from what their ego says the whole screen thing though fucking bums me out there's babies rocking two screens dual wielding like a kimbo master chief in halo 2 with smgs but a baby with ipads shit's crazy <laughs> Look at this little bastard. You got that right. <laughs> Multitasking like a true true pimp. He's not even doing anything worthwhile. He's just playing Minecraft creative mode and watching Greg do set or something. I don't you know. Little guy has no idea what's going on. I mean, if this is the extent of his life, you might as well stick him in a damn Amazon warehouse already or ship him over to China to work in a sweatshop. Something like that. I don't know. Seems kind of like a waste of time. I can't imagine having to do so many things at once just to get stimulation, just to get a little bit of dopamine, to get a little bit of accomplishment in my life. I have a lot wrong with my brain for sure, but, but I am glad that I don't have that problem. I am so, so, so glad. I'm glad that I don't have the same problems a three-year-old <laughs> has, to be honest. I grew out of it. Then you've got kids who are incredibly entitled and they just scream and yell, but that's a, a problem as old as time. And good parents prevent that. They help to make the child understand why the world does not revolve around them. Where are you? Damn. Get in there. Nah, bro. I'm shipping you off to welding school. You're going to trade school. You're going to learn a trade. You're going to be a plumber. 
all right? I don't care if you're seven. I don't care. You're old enough to work. You got hands, all five fingers. <laughs> Good luck. You're gonna get your apprenticeship, all right, by the end of February. And soon, you'll be a journeyman. Before you know it, you'll be a master. At the end of maybe five years or so, you might be running your own firm at the age of 15. Shipping you off, son of a bitch. Now we get on to the reality of having to work a nine to five. Or at least, you know, most cases, people have to work a nine to five. At least until they get to a point where they can do something, pursue, you know, a way to make money in regard to a hobby or something like that. I don't know. There's a lot of ways to make money nowadays, <laughs> like drop shipping and e-commerce. There's also real ways to make money. But people are getting out of college and going straight into jobs. Some people are getting out of high school and going straight into jobs, skipping the fluff of the whole college thing. I don't blame them. All right. A lot of debt. The value to debt ratio is way off in terms of college, especially when you compare it to any other time in modern human history. Most people, though, are not prepared for the bleak, world of having a real job and the the pressure to go into that world is immense you can't be someone who relies on mommy and daddy when you're 24 years old you have to be self-sufficient in my opinion i feel like you should be able to live with your parents for as long as you want i have an excellent relationship with my parents and i used to tell them when i was a child that i would live with them for as long as possible because i love them and because i want to be around them i want to spend time with them and because they're smart and I can learn things from them. And they were like, nah, you gotta move out. <laughs> I was like, ah, right, shit. That's fair, that makes sense. I'm an adult man. I went into the workforce immediately. I graduated college when I was 19 years old. Got a job, lasted six months. They sent me to nights and I was like, I had a lot going on in my brain. A lot of things very, very, very wrong that were unaddressed and I could not switch to nights physically. I had a bit of a mental breakdown, a bit of a nervous episode if i had a youtube channel at that point i did but if i was actually popular and knew what to do on youtube and didn't just want to jump off a bridge i would have probably made a burnout video and started it by going <sighs> i was up. i quit a job that was a really good job especially for my first real job before that i was a farrier that's a real job if you don't know what that is it's a job that's been around for two thousand years and it's still important today but what does a farrier actually do? His job is to keep the hoof in tip-top shape, such as by trimming, filing, and when needed, popping a shoe on. I know it's a meme, I talk about it all the time, farrier. My dad is a farrier, master farrier in Northern Virginia. He's very good at what he does, and I was his apprentice for basically since I was 14 years old until 19. Then I worked at a Geosat uplink as a compression technician. Quit that job in six months, because I had to go to nights, and I was like, uh, if I go to nights, I'm gonna take my little 2007 Ford Focus hatchback and just into oncoming traffic, something like that. I don't know. Something was very wrong with me, to be honest. Quit that shit, went back to working for my dad, started my YouTube channel, started putting, you know, 12 hours of work into that every single day, non-ironically, and so many hours misspent, wasted on just dumbass editing. And then that eventually started to work out, and here we are now. I have never had to have a real job for an extended period of time. That's not to say I haven't worked my ass off doing the things that I love. I have not taken a moment of this for granted, but the point of me explaining that is that I do understand a little bit what it's like to have to have a nine to five job, a job where you can't just work harder to make more money, a job where you, you know, beyond just overtime, the ceiling is there. It's very clear that there is a ceiling there and you have reviews. If you're not performing well, then there's another, whatever, three, four, five, six month window to another review where you can raise your ceiling even further. If you can even do that in the job that you have. I understand the bleak nature of work. That's the point of bringing all that stuff up. And I bring that up because I hate YouTubers and I hate people who have it really easy. I very jealous guy, very envious guy of people who are very lucky. I've not ever been lucky that to be honest, I've, it makes me upset when I think about it. I feel, I feel like I'm lucky now, but by God, I wish I would have been lucky a lot earlier. F the point is, I get how overwhelming it can be to be a regular normal person that actually has to have a real f***ing job. And when YouTubers talk about it being real work, and it's just like, it's pretty laughable. Come on, come on, it's pretty laughable. Just, I'd rather do this than anything else in the entire world. It's not a trade. It's hard, for sure, it's hard. Not everybody can do it, but by God. Shoo, I think it's, it's, I don't have a lot of sympathy points to gain from you guys. It's pretty easy, it's pretty easy. It's, it's definitely really hard and it's, it's finicky, but mm, I'd rather do this. <laughs> now, that being said, it's also not that hard 
to work some jobs. It comes in waves. There's levels to it. It's not that hard. For example, this woman who went viral a few months ago for being in tears after having to think about working a nine to five job. I know I'm probably just being so dramatic and annoying, but this is my first job, like my first nine to five job after college. And I'm in person and I'm commuting in the city and it takes me fucking forever to get there. There's no way I'm going to be able to afford living in the city right now. So that's off the table. Like fucking duh. If I was able to walk to work and it, it'd be fine, but I'm not. The caption of that is Gen Z girl finds out what it's like to have a real job. And you know, as much as I want to be like, yeah, dunk on that fool. She welcome to the real world. It does suck. It's pretty terrible. And we're absolutely not meant to do this we're not meant to work nine to five in a dingy ass office with people you do not give a singular fuck about we're kind of meant to like you know be around people we want to be around for extended periods of time and be productive together and work towards goals together that's like what we're meant to do so i get that it sucks but at the same time suck it up a little bit you don't gotta cry and make a video about it that's very gen z of you maybe think about every single other civilization in the world that isn't you living in a city i mean there's a lot worse you could be off this jail is also home to women with babies among trash and vermin with no special treatment. So she's sad because she starts off having to get a real life job. It's an in-person job. She's got to travel there. That fucking sucks. It is totally fair to be stressed from a job, by the way. I've, you, you know, the first time doing anything can be awful. I remember the first time that I went into work, I was having a panic attack for like three hours going into work. And I was like, man, I'm just, you know, this is terrible. I'm going to just drive off a bridge into oncoming traffic or something. And then I got to work because I didn't do that. And I went to go take a piss and I looked at my penis and it was so small it made me laugh and then i was like oh none of this really matters this is just me doing something i have to do until i can go back and be around people that i love and then my t got a little bit bigger after that and I, I felt better so a little anecdote for that girl if she wants to help you know use that as help or whatever talks about having to get on the train at 7 30 a.m and get home at 6 15 at the earliest i get on the train at 7 30 and i don't get home till like 6 15 earliest a lot of people have it way worse my parents for example had it way worse that you know I definitely don't have it worse, but for sure, there are many people who do have it substantially worse, and I have had it substantially worse than this. By the way, there are people who do exactly what she's doing and also have children, and they feed them Wendy's for, for dinner and shit. That makes a little bit of sense. Then she's about not having time to work out, talking about how she doesn't have any energy, and honestly, it's fair, and I relate to it. It makes sense. I don't have time to do anything. I don't, I want to shower eat my dinner and go to sleep. I don't have time or energy to cook my dinner either. Like I don't have energy to work out. Like that's out the window. Like I'm so upset. Oh my God. This is America, baby. You know, it's what's gonna happen. It's what's gonna, it's just how it is kind of. Sucks. Maybe make a change or something. I don't know how you're supposed to make a change when you're a young person, but life sucks. That's like kind of the point. Life does suck and then you die and you have to pay taxes and everyone you know will die. And that is quite unfortunate, but at the same time, it's freeing in a way, you know? Is it just me? It, it is freeing in a way. You have plenty of time to do the things that you want to do. Maybe not have a, a beautiful blossoming social life and where you can do party drugs every single weeknight and get wasted at noon or anything like that but you can absolutely wake up, work out, eat good food, read a book, scroll on TikTok for 30 minutes, go to work, get home 6.15, work out again if you want, meditate, watch some TV, call your parents, call your friends, organize some time to hang out with your friends. There's enough time to do everything you want, absolutely, in that day. And there are people who have it way, 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 way worse. I'm a roof boulder. It's about four feet high. And we put 42 inch bolts in the top crawl everywhere, knees ache every night, but it's worth it for your family. This girl is only one person. There are tons of people who are incredibly overwhelmed in the workforce right now. Gen Zers. The workforce, by the way, guys, I have to reiterate, it does suck. It absolutely does suck. Here's this person talking about having panic attacks at work. Me when I have a panic attack and cry every day before work, even though I literally like my job. Are you okay? What? Just, just think. See, that's pretty sad. I actually feel that one. That, that, that's pretty chill. I, I get that. I was definitely, I didn't cry. I don't cry really. But uh, the panic attack thing, man. Choo. And that with a little heart meme, not fun. Not a fun thing. There's this person who cries every shift. Anyone else cry before every shift? Like I don't hate my job, but for some reason I cry every time. Is it just like a massive mental health crisis maybe that's perpetrated by screens and algorithms designed to suck your attention away from yourself and your physical body and the people around you and into your 
in phones. So you can make a incredibly wealthy 1% of people even more incredibly wealthy. And am I a part of the problem? Yes. But also, don't be so cringe about it. <laughs> Is that normal though? Is crying before something difficult, is that normal? Because I don't do that. I don't feel the need to cry before I go do something. I do feel very overwhelmed a lot, like 90% of the time, but like, I feel like that ain't normal. You know, just suck it up, I guess. Just don't cry or something. What are you, SpongeBob? Also this person, when I spend all eight hours at work fantasizing about how productive I'll be when I get home so I can work towards quitting said job just to be so exhausted from work that all I can do is lay down and feel useless until I inevitably repeat the same thing next day. Awesome. Hashtag capitalism. It's completely valid. By the way, just because you're in this video, if, if, if anyone who I'm making fun of is, is seeing me make fun of them in this video, I agree with everything that all these people are saying. This shit does suck, man. Also crying right before work. Pretty epic tr tr TikTok trend. Quick cry sesh before work. How about you? I don't cry before work. I fart. I fart shit out of my asshole. Fart everywhere. Shit everywhere. Just to be clear too, no offense to these people. I would never ever admit, even if I did cry before work, every day before my job. <laughs> funny if i just cried every day and i was a youtuber dude no youtuber has ever felt this much pain as these poor people working standard wage jobs these, these people on youtube making videos they cry about having the best job in the entire world and then you've got these people who are probably working at like jamba juice some shit like that some real jobs and they're crying and pushing through and making content about it and then you've got youtubers making i'm overwhelmed and i'm so stressed i cry before every recording session no, you don't. Shut up, you fing bitch. Everyone feels trapped, it seems. Everyone's fed up. Everyone's ruined in the head. And uh, whose fault is it? No one's. No one's. But luckily, you can do something about it by joining the Gump Club. Go to gump.club. And it's back, guys. That's right. We're doing exclusive, awesome content. Everything that we cut out of this video, going on the Gump Club. Stuff we can't put on YouTube, it's going on the Gump Club. Used to have a reading thing. Now, I just changed it to be one thing a month because it's way too f***ing much work, genuinely. I work so much and I don't want to die young because I actually found a person that I love and I want to maintain myself for as long as possible and not literally die when I'm 30. Gump.club, $5 a month, buy me a Dr. Peppa. Maybe if you wanna help the team or whatever, it helps the team and you get to see cool shit. And also we're gonna be doing Q and A's and all sorts of really cool stuff. You get merch discounts, it's awesome. Gump.club, motherfuckers, it's back. Also, I'm making a new Discord, a Gump Discord. Now I will stroke off some blue collar workers for just a, a, a minute. You know, people who work in oil fields. Bro, bro, look, bro, that guy works in oil fields, bro. He's a fucking god, bro. Look, bro, he's a fucking legend, bro. Look. Hey, Gunda. Bro, yes, bro. I want you to fucking oil my face. Wait, net thou, I net thou. Farriers, plumbers. Supervisor bitch ass over there with no hair. Oh! <laughs> Construction workers. We're gonna tie them wires right there. That electricity wire. One of us probably get fucking killed trying to tie it up there. But if we don't die, we're gonna drink this beer and call it a day. Fuck yeah. All very important jobs. That shit's hard. Don't see a lot of them crying, but you do see a lot of them hopelessly addicted to nicotine and alcohol uh, and just being bad people. But anyways, I mean, look at this shit. This looks like a hard job. What even is this? This is like the joke one. This is the one that they post on Twitter. Oh yeah, Gen Z. How about this? Bet you couldn't attach this big clamp to the muddy pipe. I mean, I don't even know what this job is, but it does look really hard. This guy right here, he's got his hands on tongs. And what tongs are, are they're like a big pipe wrench and they bite onto the drill pipe and they make up the connection. And I don't feel bad for them, by the way. I mean, they're getting paid probably a lot, but I'd be shocked if these guys had more time than a lot of the people we've seen crying and moaning. But it's the metal of man, right? Like, you know, you can't expect one person who's been raised a specific way to understand things. People just don't know. It doesn't make them worse or bad or invaluable or of less value. It just makes them have different experiences. It's just kind of the way that it is. What happens if you ask one of these old country boys if they would recommend this job to anyone else? They say no. <laughs> what do you recommend it to other people? No. No. It's hard work, it's long hours, it's uh, bad weather, and it's not great pay. There are a lot of jobs where you quite literally destroy your body for money. You're converting your physical body into money to just exist in a system. It sucks. Not great pay. What is the pay? What is the pay? Not, 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 not even a uh, labor pay. Not the exact number, but throw out a number, average pay that they do so. Uh, you get what you need with 80,000 a year to 100,000 a year. Okay. That's not too bad. Yeah, it's not too bad, but you're breaking, you're breaking the map. Hashtag capitalism. Am I right, fellow communists? I'm not a communist. Just kidding. Let's not forget about nurses. Hi, I'm Natalie, and this is me before my 12 hour shift. <laughs> 
I'm Natalie, and this is me after my 12 hour shift. Doctors, line workers. People who work at Amazon. People who clean stuff. This isn't a sewer. It's the closest thing to it. Ah, good idea to keep your mouth shut when you're down here. <laughs> Retail workers. Hey, how are you? So, where are you from? I'm just looking. Oh, I can help put that stuff back, girl. Oh, no, I've worked retail. I got you, girl. People who make food for other people. I don't think you can actually cook. If you eat a fucking chalk, If you can't man, cook a uh, fucking if muscle. You, a fucking yes. chalk. Yeah. Uh, Go on. Hey. Go on. Yeah. Uh, Finish it then. Finish what? What are you about to are say? You? What am I about to say? Cook a muscle. No, I haven't cooked one. Right. Okay. Right. So, shall I show you how to cook a muscle? Oh, at last. Thank you. Yes, oh. please. There's a lot of jobs that are really hard and people don't bitch and moan and complain about it that's life that's what all the people say i've got to say that I, I feel a little bit responsible for this problem myself beyond just parents especially when you know talking about the people who hate working because i work a job that is objectively easier than probably 95 percent of all other jobs hey guys uh we're a tiny little fish and you know what that means it's time to feed and it's time to grow and it is hard it is tough I do, you know, there's a lot to it. I have employees, I have to manage them, et cetera. It's just me managing that. There's editors, you have to coordinate a lot of things. We do a lot, we do a lot of good work. Okay, okay, okay. I don't want to slob off content creators. When you are a normal person in the normal world and you see something like what I do or like what Jack Doherty does or Aiden Ross or PewDiePie or Pokimane or whatever, that looks so much better and it looks so much more glamorous and it looks so much more fun. And it is, unfortunately, it is. And you make a lot of money doing these things. Call me two chains. Call me two chains because I got one on right now. Am I right? Yeah. Call me three chains because I got one on right now. Ah. Yo, this one's upside down, but look at these chains. They bust in. Look, this one right here matches the bracelet I got on right now. This is a demoralizing thing that we do in the name of entertainment, allegedly. And that's why so many kids now want to fucking be content creators and entertainers. If you look up to me in any way, please do not be a content creator or any form of entertainer. Be a novelist or something like that. Write books that I will read when I finally learn how. Be a CPA, for God's sake. Ignore all this shit. It's lame dude i'm trying my best to not ignore it i mean this kid to toy reviews kid is worth 140 million dollars that's such bullshit dude this shit just demoralizes me you know there's levels to this thing it's demoralizing so yeah i am throwing shade to youtubers who who complain about burnout it is it is it is doesn't make sense <laughs> it doesn't it doesn't doesn't make sense bro you don't know what it is you don't know you have no idea you have no idea Shut the fuck up. Another more subjective facet to this entire thing is the entitlement slash coddling of the youth. We've seen a little bit of entitlement, that little girl wanting people to clean a room for her and stuff. But man, people are very spoiled. They're very, 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 very spoiled. For example, there's this kid who got mad when the tooth fairy gave them $2 instead of three or four or whatever when they're lucky that they even had a parent gracious enough to lie to them and pretend that the tooth fairy is even real. <laughs> Kidding me right now? You're mad. Yes! Why? You have a tooth fairy monster. A lot of kids don't have that. I got two dollars so? on the tooth fairy. So? That's not good enough? My tooth is worth way more. Your tooth was worth more than that? Yes! Are I you... like the tooth fairy. She's a stupid <gasps> I put my teeth under the fucking pillow. I didn't get shit. This kid smashed cups because he's screaming and crying. He wanted a phone. He's dumb. What did the mom do to stop him from screaming? Nothing. Actually, he got an Oreo, but he didn't even want it. He slapped it out of her hand. Or this video of a kid getting his phone taken away and him just smashing up the place in anger. That's cringe. Why are you doing that, little bro? What are you doing? Why are you doing that, you bastard? I don't know if this is fucking Bruce. Is this a 12-year-old or Bruce Banner, bro? A 12-year-old boy did this after mom took away his phone. How? <laughs> How? Put him in the trash, dude. Put him in the trash. Like, straight up. There's nothing else you can do. You put him in the trash. He's trash. Put him in the trash. Throw him away. Bag him up. He's a monster, not a child. He's a monster. Kid destroyed... The kid knocked the fucking fridge over. How's that even possible? Smash the countertop. Destroyed it. I feel like this has got to be fake. Like a tornado or something. I have no idea. The toilet he's even smashed. Another thing that really grinds my 
fucking gears and pisses me off is kids who get way too many gifts and stuff and they don't really care about gifts anymore. Gift giving to me is like sacred. It's one of my main ways to communicate with people. I love giving people stuff. I love giving people things or making something for someone. It's materialistic, whatever, but I really like it. I enjoy the process. I enjoy seeing their reaction, especially if they're autistic like me and it makes them uncomfortable. I love that shit because I cannot get gifts at all. I'm fucking weird. I get, I, I don't hate it. I don't like getting gifts, but I do appreciate it immensely. But seeing kids who get gifts and they're just like, they don't care, it bothers me a lot. Look at these kids. This is crazy, dude. Why do they need that many gifts? There's not even that much. I don't think I've bought that much stuff off Amazon in the last year. Why do you need that many fucking gifts? That's crazy. Maybe give some of those to a, a pregnant mother. <laughs> Someone who needs more gifts. Either that or Santa is real and he's just really, really, really keen on these folks. You got a 90s Christmas tree versus a Christmas tree now. It's anecdotal, but this is a little, little brat who's not happy that he got a gift that he has to share with someone else. And then there's kids in the 90s who are like, I'd love to see the excitement. That's what I like. I'm going to try to get that out of kids if I ever have kids. I remember one time going down to this one kid's house, mansion, and uh, he was real rich and I was not at all. And I remember it was during Christmas and I saw how many gifts he had. Literally a stack of gifts in the corner of his room. And I was nine years old. So I asked him, I was, I was like, hey, can I have one of those? Like, can I have a gift? Or like one of your gifts or something? Like one of these toys? You have multiple of a couple. And he's like, no, they're mine. And I just remember contemplating just beating him up. <laughs> Literally. Like, I was like, why? That doesn't make any sense. You have three of the same thing. You're not going to use that. You're not going to use three of them. You could give one to me or two to me, and then I could give one to my sister, who I don't even like. Or I could just give it to one of my friends, and we could enjoy it, and everyone could have fun. And this kid was so selfish because he got everything. And uh, yeah, it, that, that bothered me a lot. That bothered me a lot. Didn't beat him up. Didn't beat him up. Should have, though. Little fucker. He's doing fine, though. So no worries, just in case you're worried about it. Just kids throwing tantrums too. Here's a kid standing here making noise for seemingly no viable logical reason whatsoever. Classic. <laughs> I hate the sound. Okay. <laughs> oh, wow, I like it. Oh, he's so adorable though. Holy shit. That's funny. <laughs> Also, bribing kids, I feel like, is a, a gigantic weakness that a parent, a parents use. I never got bribed. I got blackmailed <laughs> by my parents. Come on, let's go. Let's go. Kids are so stupid. But let them destroy themselves. They will. They're children. For this issue, I think the biggest part of it is probably parents, I would say, and also social media for just kind of showing kids videos of other maybe rich kids seeing that they can get whatever they want. It's hard to be like, oh, that kid's like me. But why does he have so much more than I have? Why don't I have? Like Willy Wonka type. OG Willy Wonka, not this new cringe fucking twink shit. What is, what is going on with the new Willy Wonka? I mean, what the f***, dude? Is it good? I don't even know. I saw a musical part and it looked ass. Gene Wilder is one of my favorite actors of all time, and that movie is incredible and a masterpiece, so it's gonna be a tough compare for me, all right? Anyways, what was I talking about? Oh yeah, the heart wants what the heart, the heart desires what it cannot have. What the fuck is that saying? I don't, the, wait, you want what you can't have? I don't know. I don't know how to teach that lesson to kids. I don't know how to make them see rationally or logically. I guess you just have to beat them. <laughs> no, just kidding, don't. Just don't do that, man. Don't do that. But also, don't let them take terrible traits to school because they'll be reinforced. I don't really know, man. It's the parents' fault, though. It's gotta be. It's gotta be. The parents' faults for letting them be exposed to the things that are making them rot. Then again, I don't know. No, I'm not a parent. And now, finally, the biggest talking point, in my opinion, in regard to all of this is the mental health crisis that I mentioned earlier. I shared some anecdotes of things that I dealt with in regard to all this stuff, joining the real world and having a terrible existential crisis when I was 19 years old, reading Walden, disappearing into the woods for weeks, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. All these things we showed you in today's video are fueled by much deeper seated issues that are rampant in today's youth and millennials, just people, depression, anxiety, all these problems just shot up out of fucking nowhere and everyone's like well suck it up and but you can't there's there there's deep problems there's you can't just suck it up you can but then you have to fix it once you suck it up once you put the band-aid on it you also have to undo the problem and, and suck it up fortunately people are opening up about their mental health 
um, struggles as of late, but also, unfortunately, it's become like a thing now. You just get virtue points for just saying you're sad and saying that you're depressed and saying that you have anxiety. Those things are very, very, very meaningful. They're not just labels that you can slap onto yourself. Some people's lives are actual waking hell because they can't escape. There's no romanticizing these things. A lot of the content you see in regard to depression and mental health is completely romanticized. It's like, oh, woe is me. I'm a white, I'm a white person. I love the fray or whatever, you know? And I've done it before, but it just, you know, it's rotten. It, it's it's one, another one of these things that's just a f***ing huge distraction that has just come out of nowhere and gets absolutely nothing done. And there's a lot of those people on TikTok. Shifters. People who shift out of their real world into their Harry Potter realm. So they think they're in another reality so they can just distract themselves and detach themselves from the horrors of the modern world. That's epic. I love that, you know? They put their mental energy into these fictional worlds and rely entirely on escapism rather than putting that energy into the real world and bettering themselves or others around them. There's also this thing called core core on TikTok where ambient music is played over things that are sad or people depressed and stuff. I just don't, I don't understand it, dude. I think this is My using Robert me, Downey you, Jr. Like the piece of shit I am. Did you love me or not? So we feel core, so we feel downtrodden. Answer me! If it was me dying on the sidewalk, you'd walk right over me. It's not your fault. It's not your fault. There's a lot of meaning to this, but I fear it's lost. I fear it's lost. It's lost because just making this part of your identity immediately becomes massive W. You get celebrated by everyone. I don't know, dude, there's a lot of these clips. I get it, I understand it, it's cool. I like, you know, some of them I, I resonate with, the but at I the same want. time, it's like, man, I'm not literally Ryan Gosling. I'm, I'm, a, I'm this, I'm With here right one. now in this real life world that I live in and things are much yeah, better right. than they've right. ever been. Everything's fucked up, dude. I don't know what to do about it. And quite frankly, I don't give a singular f I make videos on the internet and I'd like to see things get better, but they're not going to. So I'm going to make them better for myself. And then I'll, I might share my findings and uh, let you guys know what's up. Okay. In the meantime, I'm going to have a child and I'm going to give him a, an Instagram account. I'm going to name him Iron. His last name is going to be Phelps. It's my last name. And he's going to have more followers than me in a few weeks because that's what we do now in the modern, modern world. We give our children <laughs> social media accounts and iPads. I write and feed them Red 40. So they get that stare, that stare that everybody loves. In conclusion, we have set ourselves up for failure. What do you guys think though? You think I'm old? What do you think? I feel like I'm old and I'm just, I'm just a lot. I've got a lot of stuff. Sorry, I'm a detractor, world-class detractor.